Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 42, the final tutorial of this series. In this tutorial we are going to create a quick credit scene, we're going to build our game and we're also going to talk about where we can go from here development wise. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel because there's always a lot to see, a lot to learn and a lot to do. And if you've enjoyed this series, then please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So let's create a quick little credit scene and they are actually a lot simpler than most people would assume. So let's go file and new scene and all I really want on this is something simple black screen with some scrolling names. So let's go to game object UI and let's go to raw image. Let's change the color to be completely black. Let's stretch it on the anchoring so as it goes across the entire scene, uh, yeah, the entire screen I should say and zero everything out and we should end up with completely black. Now all we need to do is game object UI and let's go to text. Let's position the text uh, center and below the screen itself. So let's have the alignment center center. Let's also have it white. And probably best to increase the size because we want it quite large and it's going to be about there. Actually probably have the alignment at the top maybe. So let's say the credits are designer Jimmy Vegas um, graphics I don't know let's go let's go with Todd Howard um, what else can we have story Randy Hitchford <laughs> you see where I'm going with this not Hitchford Hitchford okay so you would just basically carry on with this um, as normal so another little trick that you can use is change the canvas to be rather than consistent pixel size, change it to scale with screen size and set this to um, 19, 20 by 10, 80. So that means that whenever we create the animation for this, it's going to stay relative to the screen. So let's create the animation. So let's go to the animations folder, make sure we have the text selected animation create and let's say credits scroll save and start recording so obviously the beginning is going to be on the y position so let's copy that and repaste it so as it stays at that position and let's say we have the credits scroll just for because of the small 10 seconds so let's say 600 frame we want them to be up here so make sure the whole thing is off screen and then stop the recording and then head to the animation itself and turn off loop time and if we press play now we should see some simple scrolling credits obviously you should take a lot more time doing this but that is effectively how we can just make credits scroll quickly and easily there's, there's nothing really more complicated to it it's it's as simple as that so all you would need to do now is link this in the same way that you would link everything else to the main menu. So we'll save the scene. Uh, so save as, just call it credits. And I'm not going to link it to the main menu, but I am going to add it to my build settings. So add open scenes. So on the main menu, all you would need to do is just like everything else, use the scene management and link it to your credit button. So what now? Let's look at adding in some links to our main menu. So for example, if we go to our canvas and I'm going to turn off post processing so we can see it a little better. Let's have a link down here which links to your website. So game object UI and let's go uh, button. I'll leave it titled as button, but let's make this button say something like website. So you could link to your development website or even your Ichio page or your Steam page or whatever. Let's go to scripts and let's go to main menu if I can find it. 
fact, let's click on main menu control, main menu function right there. And in here, let's add a, another method. So public um, load site helps if we have a void there, doesn't it? <laughs> so it knows. And then open close bracket, open curly bracket. And to do this, all we need to put in is application dot open URL and in brackets and quotes, the name of where you want that to be. So for example, my website would be HTTP colon slash slash jvunity.com. So we colon and save. Head back into Unity. And then you would just need to set that button up with that method. So I'm gonna actually anchor that down to the bottom there. And button, let's click on the plus, drag over menu control, click on no function, main menu function, and load site. So now whenever we click that button, it will load up my website because it's linked right there. So whatever website you have, you just have it right there. So now let's save it and let's take a look at some of the build settings before we build our actual game. So let's go to, if I click right, let's go to edit and let's go to, let's go to project settings. So you'll have a list here of a couple of different things. And to be honest, a lot of them for basic development aren't too important. The ones you might want to play around with are possibly some of the physics but again, that's not something we're going to touch because realistically, a lot of this is a lot more de advanced development. Uh, but I'll explain a little bit more of that later in this tutorial. The one we're going to focus on more than anything right now is this player. The player is the actual physical application, not the player in the game. So, for example, our company name would be JB Game Studios. You put whatever yours is there. Product name, Survival horror game whatever your product name is it could be like for example mine was the demons inside for something i made a while ago and version you can use a version on this if you want to if not keep it as version 1.0 default icon now this icon is going to be displayed on the actual application file itself and down here in the taskbar you'll see like for example the unity logo there that's the icon it's going to use. So you could use any texture. You could create your own. You could use one we already have. Let's use that full eye. So that can be our icon. We have the build settings down here for a couple of different platforms. Obviously, we have PC. So there's our icon that will appear. Resolution and presentation. I always like to keep it full screen window just because it's, you know, it, everyone loves full screen. Why, why would you want it in a window? but I guess some people do. So feel free to play around with some of these. By default, Unity is pretty good at everything it has. I mean, its default settings are pretty good, much good to go. If you wanted to build the game now, you wouldn't really have a problem. Everything would be completely fine. So just check out a couple of those. Generally, I'd, I'd say leave it as uh, its default settings and maybe come back to it when you've built the game and played around with it. Next, we have the splash image. Now, the splash image, um, I don't think really matters too much at this point. Um, back in the earlier versions of Unity, it kind of would because it'd be that little application box when you started the game where you could choose a couple of different things like the quality and whatnot. But for now, I'm just going to place that in there as well. I wouldn't worry too much about the splash image. You've got your other settings and then your reality settings down here. Again, if you're doing something like virtual reality, then yeah, obviously, but I am not. A uh, couple, Like I say, a couple of other settings here to go through. By default, once again, I honestly think everything should be fine. You don't need to worry too much. Going through all of this would be a whole series in itself, if I'm honest. Other platforms, if you do want to build for them, for Apple devices or Android devices, same kind of principle applies on all of them here. You can see it's, it's just pretty much the same thing. Uh, we are building for PC, so we are only gonna focus on the PC settings for now, but never be afraid to play around with some of the others. So the other setting we're going to look at here is quality. We can actually select what kind of quality we can have for our game. Again, by default, it is 
pretty much spot on. You don't need to change anything here. And if you do want to play around with anything, don't be afraid because you can always reset them. Another good um, indication of using something is if you hover over it, it will tell you what exactly it does. For example, soft particles, use soft blending for particles on. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good because it's going to make it at least mesh together a little better, if that's the right word to use. Um, you can also rename some of these settings. So if you click the settings up here, for example, Ultra, you could rename that to Epic or something like that. Um, and you could also change a couple of the settings down here if you want to. But like I say, for now, let's leave it as default. Maybe change this, like I say, to Epic, because why not? And we'll see how this reacts when we build the game itself. So, like I say, feel free to play around with some of the others. You don't necessarily have to. Default is great, and I will show you why default is great now. So I'm going to save my project again. And now I'm going to go to File, Build Settings, and I'm going to click Build and Run. And what this will do is it will compile everything we've created into a playable version that you can upload wherever you want to so as other people can play it. So build and run and it will prompt you for a folder. So right click and let's go to new and folder. I'm just going to call this SH short for survival horror and then select folder and it will start building. It may take a little bit of time, especially if your project is quite large. Uh, I'm hoping this is not going to take too long to build, but while it is building, I'm going to discuss where to go from here development wise. So over the past 12 hours of this series, We've learned a lot of different things. We haven't necessarily learned everything we need to know. However, we've learned different chunks, which would be enough to combine and build together um, an entire game. For example, we have um, a little kind of puzzle element to it where we shoot the vase to get the key and where we've got the eyes. So you could combine those two to create another type of puzzle. We've got the basic elements for enemy AI down, so you can add in enemies, you can add in bosses. We know how to use UI, so you could add in a more visual UI element for health or something like that. Um, so realistically, all you need to do at this point is figure out what you want to do with your game, where you want to build it. If you want to build a huge game that sprawls everywhere, something like maybe um you look at something like fallout then obviously this is not quite going to fit that if you want to build something like resident evil evil within something along those lines then obviously you could just go back and forth through this series to learn different things and combine them to create your game so a good example would be what can you do next because we left it where we put the eye in that wall went up you could build a new area where some steps go down underground into some kind of cave and there are like seven zombies in there. You could use the nav mesh and you could use the AI we created on the first zombie to have those zombies wander around. And when you get close enough, they come and try and get you. So you see what I mean with this kind of development? You can combine so many elements together to create that finalized game. And another good thing would be, well, the fact I have many hundreds of tutorials on my channel, you could cross-reference that with a lot of different tutorials. So you could go maybe to the Wolfenstein one. You could even go to the RPG one and take some elements of that, bring them out and place them into a survival horror game. I mean, don't forget, I do have so many assets that you can use as well. So you could head over to maybe one of the first person shooter series I have and take some of the assets from that and place them in this series. Never be afraid to go as far as developing what you want to see in the game. And what I mean by that is there are no limits. There are no limits at all. So once you built your game, where can you put it? I recommend Itch.io. The reason I recommend Itch.io is because I find it an easy, free and quick platform to use. And I'm not sponsored by Itch.io. They don't pay me for, to say that. That's my own opinion. I've come to that conclusion myself and nobody else has made me say that. So Itch.io is probably the best platform. You've got other places like Game Jolt and Steam. Um, you know, they are good to an extent. Steam can be a little bit of a difficult platform. But if you can get in with the big guys, Sony and Microsoft, there you go, Xbox and PlayStation for your game. 
So yeah, um, that is pretty much all I've got to say on where we can go development wise. If you need to know any more, please let me know in the comments. Um, I know I waffle on sometimes a little bit and sometimes it doesn't make quite so much sense. But if you leave a comment, I will try and get back to you as best I can. There are also many other people that watch this as well, not just you. So they should be able to help as well. They can give guidance because there are some very intelligent people around. So if I don't answer, I'm sure they will. So this is hopefully coming to an end building now. Um, I did kind of want to leave this building real time so you can gauge just how long it should take to build this game and if um you know you at this point you're thinking i'm bored of listening to you now jimmy just skip ahead probably a minute or two because it shouldn't take much more than a minute or two and that's my alarm going off <laughs> that's telling me i've done this too long thank you phone bit of humor there well not really humor it wasn't funny um so yeah just skip ahead a little bit at this point I think generally, I'm going to talk a little bit about how long it takes to build projects at this point. A project of this caliber will probably take between 5 and 10 minutes to build because there's only a couple of scenes. It's not too strenuous, there's only a little bit going on. And I think if you're going to have a massive game, if you consider, for example, something like Resident Evil 7, if we decide to build all of that in Unity, how long do you think that would take to build like this, to compile? That would take a considerable amount of time because the game is huge, there's a lot to it, and it's quite intensive. And as I said, it's pretty much done now. You can see once you get to the post-processing player, oh, we're done. There we go. So that was all real time. That was me waffling for 320 seconds. And there we go. Straight into the game. We can see it's all good. So this is a good chance to play test your game. Now it may be a little bit jittery at this point, um, it is not the game, don't worry, it is OBS. OBS decides every now and again that it does not want to record things properly <laughs> and it can be a little bit jittery, but don't worry about that too much. So you can see even in full screen everything looks relatively decent, it seems okay, I'm quite happy with how that the looks. Of October you as the developer... 2008 changed me forever. Okay, it changed you forever. Brilliant. You as the developer should probably I go back... I headed out to investigate the haunting sounds in the woods. You should probably go back and maybe tweak a couple of things. It's always good to see what the game would look like fully built as it is I now. I stumbled upon a clearing with a cabin in the distance. And we'll probably see that as we get to the next scene because I expect to see some kind of bug somewhere. I could hear those sounds again coming from there. So what I'll do is I will play this up until the first section. Just little to make sure did I know, it's all okay. This was only the beginning. So it seems okay. Obviously, I've rushed a lot of this. Hopefully, yours looks a lot better than mine does. Boom. Oh, where okay, am I? Okay, so it's looking okay so far. I need to get out of here. Looks okay. Happy with that. Looks like there's a weapon on that table. Okay, so I'm going to come out of that now. So you can see we're... Oh, thank you, I've asked. So we're on here now, and down here it took 320 seconds to build that, which, okay, fair enough. I waffled on for about five minutes, but I did say it would take about five to ten minutes, and it did. It did take five minutes, twenty seconds. So that is a good way of judging how long it's going to take to build. And if I go to this folder here, you can see there's our folder for the survival horror, and there is our icon right there, that little eye. So that's pretty much all I've got to teach in terms of survival horror. Like I said, you can go back and forth between different tutorials to learn different things, but realistically, from what we've learned in the last 12 hours, you can quite easily create a fully-fledged survival horror game. So I hope this has been helpful to those of you who've stuck around for 12 hours, and if you want to know any more, please leave a comment, and I do hope to see you in some of my other tutorials. Thank you very much for watching, guys.